in any wise go back and cleave unto the remnant of these nations. Now, he's instructing the nation of Israel, look, if you go back, so we're going to deal with go back. We were getting free from the land of Egypt in the Exodus. So we were free from the nations. But God is letting us know as a people, if we will go back to them, read. Even these that remain among you. Come on. And shall make marriages with them. Make what? Make marriages with them. We're not, we not going to play any games with our people out here. A lot of the men out here is walking through the sidewalks, hoping to get them a so-called snow bunny. They ain't out here just to drink and be Irish for a day. They out here to mingle with the nations interracially. God says that is a sin according to the Bible. He made you higher than the other nations. Read. And go in unto them. Come on. And they to you. Come on. Know for a certainty. So God says if you do this, if you go forth with what you find good in your mind, which is interracial marriage, which is against what God told us to do. Read. That the Lord your God will no more drive out any of these nations from before you. So God said know for a certainty. If I look down from my throne and y'all marrying these other nations, I'm not going forth in war for y'all anymore. The reason y'all were winning is because I was going forth in the battle with you. Our people like to talk about when you look at sports, with your athletes, your boxing, any type of altercation where you have to move your body. We're stronger than them. We're faster than them. We jump higher than them. We, are, we have more on the earth than they do. So how is it that we can't overcome them? We, we beat them in every statistical category except serving the Most High God. So God made sure we were always going into the fight, what? At a disadvantage. That's why we haven't overcome them. Read that line again. Know for a certainty Come on. that the Lord your God will no more drive out any of these nations from before you. Because what's going to happen? If you lay down with Becky, if you lay down with the Elamite woman, with the Ishmaelite woman, are you really going to go out and fight for your people? You're not going to do that thing, because when you come home, that wife from the other group of people on the earth, the heathen, she's going to look at you with them eyes, she's going to open her eyes, she's going to give you that cat look. Baby, it's really all of us are just one. You know, we all bleed red, and you're going to be like, yeah, baby, you're right, you're right. I guess I don't have to go out there and fight for my people who are still at the bottom to this day in 2019. Her people not on the bottom. So she good, she ain't going to fight for nothing. So know for sure that she is going to teach you not to fight for anything. But for the man, he is going to teach the black woman not to fight for anything. Look, you good here? I'm white with good credit. What else you need? So they're going to teach us not to fight for our people. Read. But they shall be snares and traps. They shall be what? Snares and traps. Somebody asked that brother Tiger Woods how much his wife took from him in the divorce. The Bible says snares and traps. Somebody asked our unfortunate brother, Bill Cosby, what happened when all the women stood up and said, me too? snares and traps. God's word is not a lie. We the ones out here playing games. We the ones out here lying. God meant every word he gave us. You so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, you are the chosen people according to God. You are the Israelites according to God. Read that line again. And they shall be snares and traps unto you. Come on. And scourges in your sides. Scourges in your sides. When you try to accomplish something for your people, they're going to make sure they're in the mix to make sure it doesn't go right for your people. Explain to me how the NAACP is an organization for colored people, but there are non-colored people holding executive positions. in that order. Are they going to do something to help you? Or are they going to make sure that your people never rise up? Read that line again. And scourges in your sides. Scourges in your sides. It doesn't matter what political party you talk to, independent, democratic, republican, they all agree no reparations. They all agree. But we think they're all against each other and they're not on the same side. No matter what political party you talk to, they all agree. For these people that we've enslaved, give them nothing. They are scourges in our sides. They're not here to help us. Read. And thorns in your eyes. Here's a scourge in your side. Y'all coming out here to drink? You don't think the local police are going to set up checkpoints? They're going to be checking IDs? They're going to be checking your intoxication level? That's a scourge in your side. That's a, uh, that's them scourging you in your side. Read. Read that again. And, and scourges in your side. Come on. And thorns in your eyes. So we're not thinking, oh, you know what? I'm going to go down to downtown Savannah. I'm going to go to where they used to sell my ancestors in the market squares. That's why they're designed like this, to where they auctioned us off on the blocks. I'm going to go down here, and I'm going to party on the bones of my ancestors. 
I'm a party in the same place where they cried endlessly because their children were ripped out of their arms because they were sold to the plantation in South Carolina, because they were sold to the plantation in Louisiana. I'm gonna come to that same spot and I'm gonna party like it's 1999. But as soon as September 11 come around, never forget, never forget. Well, how can we have forgotten the plight of our people? Not just past, but present. Our people are still suffering now. We gotta do better. We gotta do what the Most High God said. Give me Deuteronomy 7 and 3. Deuteronomy 7 and 3. He told this, he told this to us repeatedly. That's how I know this book is talking to so-called black Hispanics and Native Americans. Who else has to be told not to do something repeatedly? God has to tell us constantly, did I not tell you not to do this? Did I not tell you not to go into the other nations? Did I not tell you to empty thy not the oppressor and learn none of his ways? He constantly told us to us because we are a hard-headed and rebellious people. Until it's time to cry out. I got no problem partying here right now. I got the green shirt on, but where these people at when you watching around talking about Black Lives Matter? Where they at? Why they arguing with you on the job about that? Oh, not only black lives, blue lives matter. Well, who the hell is blue? Ain't nobody got no blue skin on the earth. You gonna tell me blue lives matter. What is that? If black lives matter, then black, then black Christ matters. The true image of Jesus the Christ as a black man matters. Sis, sis, take a flyer, sis. Take a fly. What we are here to do, sis, is we, we're not out here to cause harm to our people. We are here to educate our people, okay? The whole whole what you got, give me second Corinthians 7 and 10. We gonna read what we are here to do for our people. We're out here to cause you to come into repentance, sis. Sis, come deal with us for a minute, okay? Come deal, let's talk. Second Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10. Second Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10. Come on. For godly sorrow. For godly sorrow, we're out here to bring our people into godly sorrow. Make no mistake, our people never raise their voice like that at the white landlord. They never raise their voice like that at the white school teacher that is ignoring their children in the classroom. But when they see men and women that look like them, there is no respect among us. Because the nations did not teach us to love ourselves, they taught us to love them. That's why we know all day holidays, but we don't know anything God gave us. Right. Read what you got. For godly sorrow uh, worketh repentance. We are here to bring our people to godly sorrow. To make you realize we have offended the most high God. And to feel repentant enough about that to change your ways. That's what we are here to do. So like medicine, it can taste bad going down, but it's good for you in the end. So we're not out here to argue and yell. We've been doing enough of that. We are here to talk and teach and edify. That's what we are here to do. Read that again. For godly sorrow. Come on. Work its repentance Come on. to salvation. Because this is going to lead you to salvation. To actually know you have offended the Most High God is going to spur you to get back in His good graces so we can get salvation. Salvation is us getting the kingdom. Salvation is not us being able to walk down here and party on St. Patrick's Day. The kingdom is for the nation of Israel. Let's read that. Luke chapter 1, verse 68. Bring Luke chapter 1, verse 68. Luke is the New Testament. Let's see if the New Testament said anything different from the Old Testament. Luke chapter 1, verse 68. Luke chapter 1, verse 68. Come on. Bless be the Lord God of Israel. Bless be the Lord God of who? Israel. So in the New Testament, God is still the God of only one people. That's the nation of Israel. But newsflash, the nation of Israel is you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. The people that have been oppressed for centuries upon this earth. You are actually God's people. So that's good news. That's the gospel that God has come for us. Read. For he had visited and redeemed his people. He visited his people through his son, the black Messiah, Jesus the Christ. According to the Bible, a man with dark skin as if he was burned in the oven. A man with hair like wool. He visited us by sending his son to redeem us from dying on the cross. That was for one group of people. Christ said, I was not sent, but for the house of Israel. Read. And hath raised up. In horn of salvation. That's talking about Christ. Read. For us. For us, which is his people. Read. In the house of his servant David. In the house of his servant David. David was a black man according to the Bible. Solomon was a black man according to the Bible. Moses, Noah, Job, Daniel, Jeremiah, and so on and so forth. These were all so-called black men according to the Bible. We're reading it straight out the scriptures. Let's prove that thing for you. Give me Acts 13 and 1. Maybe I'm making stuff up. Maybe I'm making stuff up. Maybe we have a hateful agenda. Or maybe we just reading the Bible just like it's written. 
the earth has been filled with so many church houses not reading the scriptures that when you actually hear them, it sounds crazy because you've never heard it until today. Yes, sir. Very heavy. Brother, you hear what you just said? He said with the church houses, let me get that. Give me the book of Ezekiel chapter 16 and let's start at verse 30. Bring it let's see what the Heavenly Father says about these church houses. We're looking at a church building right now. Right. The most I never ordained this to come to, uh, to happen. We're not supposed to be flocking inside these church buildings. Right. There's nothing coming out of these church buildings right. except for the mind state of your oppressor. Right. Right. The same oppressor that had you in captivity for over 400 years, man. Right. And it perpetuates and continues today. Right. That's why we all out here bugged out of our damn mind, man. The sister gonna come up talking about my black son. Sister, you failed your son. Right. Oh, Read what you got. There. Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 30. Read. Read. How weak is thine heart. How weak is your heart, Israel? The heart according to Mark 7 and 21 is the mind. Right. God is asking you, how weak has your mind become, Israel? Go ahead. Saith the Lord God. Saith the God of Israel. Go ahead. Seeing thou doest all these things. You do all these things. What are the things? Coming out here, dressing in damn green, putting paint and green in your hair, right. blonde in your hair, God never ordained you to have blonde hair. Right. Blonde hair is a curse according to Leviticus the 13th chapter right. and the high side of the Heavenly Father. Right. To hell with their identity. Right. They stole your identity. Yeah. But you going about to put blonde hair in your head is not a, re a, a reclaiming of your identity. Right. You will find your identity with inside the Bible. That's Read. Right. The work of an imperious, whorish woman. The work of an imperious, Horish woman, the customs of this whore known as Babylon the Great. Right. Read. In that thou buildest thine eminent place. Read that again. In that thou buildest thine eminent place. What you're looking at across the street is the eminent place that we tend to build. Right. The customs and the philosophies and the doctrines of our oppressors. Right. Brother, right. let me ask you a question. This church across the street, it says the first African Baptist church, okay? Where does the doctrine or the religion of the Baptist church hail from? Who created the Baptist church? Uh, white men. The white men, you're absolutely 100% correct. Right. Your oppressors. In the 1500s, his name was John Smith. Right. The majority of your slave owners were Baptists. Right. The majority of the slave owners were Christians. Right. Right. That man that you celebrate today, known as St. Patrick, in the 1700s, brought Christianity to Ireland. Right. The majority of your captors, who, you know what, as a matter of fact, how many of you brothers and sisters remember the movie Roots? With Toby. Kunta Kinte's master was an Irish man. Right. Master Walla or something like that. He beat the back in on Kuta Kente until Kuta submitted and started going by the name of Toby. Right. The same way you guys get out of here with your backs beat in and wear this damn foolish, hind uh, uh, just this damn abominable damn green, man, right. that has nothing to do with this Bible. Right. Then they give you the damn four-leaf clover representing the Trinity. There is no Trinity. The Most High God and His Son, Jesus the Christ, are one according to the laws. Right, but it's right. two separate people. Right. Give me the books of... Oh, actually, let's finish this out in regards to these churches. Finish that out. Verse 16, yes. verse 31. Come on. In that thou buildest thine eminent place. So if you look around, brothers and sisters, all throughout the ghettos, there's always a church building. Right. But the conditions of the ghetto in the block is to shambles, man. Right. It's a damn war zone. All these blocks is damn funeral homes. These churches are nothing but funeral homes for our people. Right. The, mo the modern day damn morgue for the so-called black man. Read. In the head of every way. And these, these churches are set up at the heads of every corner, at the head of every block. Go ahead. And make us thine high place. And you make your high place. Go ahead. In every street. In every street. You see Creflo set up, TD set up, Juanita Bynum set up. Right. Big money is going into these institutions. They cannot bring out the true identity of who the so-called black man is. Why? Because their slave masters will take the funding for these churches. Right. These wicked, imminent places. Go ahead. And has not been, as in harlot, in that thou scornest higher. You scornest high. You've been acting like a harlot. 
You better hold on with all these philosophies and doctrines of your oppressor. Right. Read. But as a wife. But as a wife, why? Because the nation of Israel is subject to one man, one husband, and that is Christ. Right. But we play the whore. Go ahead. That committed adultery. You see that thing? So God basically has classified you as a whore. By what? Keeping the customs of your oppressor. From there, give me the book of Acts chapter 7, verse 55. I want to deal with that four-leaf clover. I want to deal with that trinity doctrine that's pushed throughout Christianity. The Most High God and His Son, Jesus the Christ, are two different people. But their minds are on one accord, according to His laws. Read what you got. Acts chapter 7, verse 55. Come on. But He, being full of the Holy Ghost, come on, looked up steadfastly into heaven. Read. And saw the glory of God. And saw the glory of God. Go ahead. And Jesus. And who? And Jesus. And Jesus. Go ahead. Standing on the right hand of God. Wait a minute. I thought Christ and the Most High God were the same person. Read that part again. And Jesus. And who? And Jesus. The black Messiah. Right. The king, the savior of the nation of Israel. You so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Right. You are the gods of this planet, man. That's, That's right. right. You are God's chosen people. Right. Read. And Jesus standing on the right hand of God. Wait a minute. So it said Christ was standing at the right hand of God. Right. So what does that mean? That Trinity doctrine that Christianity pushes is garbage. That's right. Thus saith the Lord God. That's the New Testament. This you will never hear in your churches. You will never hear this in your congregations, man. Point blank and period. Isaiah 5 and 11. I got to deal with another matter. I'm sorry, officer. Because we came here early, man. And a lot of you brothers and sisters claim that you're Christians and, and, and love the Lord, but you won't do the things that the Bible commanded you to do. Right. I'm a witness to that. And all of you guys are a bunch of lies. You'll be in church tomorrow giving up all your life pension. To what? For lies, man. Read what you got. Isaiah chapter 5 verse 11. Come on. Whoa, unto them. Wait a minute. That, that word, when you guys hear that word, whoa, it means destruction. Whoa, according to God, means destruction. Read it again slowly for all of them that are out here. Whoa, unto them that rise up early. Wait a minute. We got here early to come out and edify the lost sheep of the house of Israel. God said destruction. Destruction to those that rise up early to do what? In the morning. In the morning. We've been here since the morning watching the traffic of our people go to and fro. Coming in here buying and selling on the Lord's Sabbath day. Right. Read. That they may follow strong drink. All y'all out here to drink some damn green beer. The most High God said destruction to y'all that rise up early in the morning to get intoxicated and flamed to be out here in this damn reveling and this worshiping of damn Bacchus, man. Right, this right. is all pagan worship. That's God right. never ordained y'all to come out here and be a damn drunk on the Lord's Sabbath day. Right. Point blank and period, man. Point blank. You guys love iniquity. You guys love abominations. And you hate the word of God. Right. Give me the book of Jeremiah, the 10th chapter. Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 10. I'm sorry. Yes, yes. Isaiah 5 and 20. Let's get that first. Then we'll go to Jeremiah. Isaiah the, uh, uh, 5 and 20. Give me that. Isaiah. Chapter 5, verse 20. Read. Woe unto them that call evil good. The Bible says destruction to you, brothers and sisters of the nation of Israel, that call evil good. Right. You call St. Patrick's Day good. Right. Yeah. Nothing good can come out of St. Patrick's Day right. except for later tonight. Hey, hey, the streets will be quiet and clear after they clean everything up. Right. Nothing good can come out of St. Patrick's Day but bodies being filled up in the damn morgue of brothers that look just like me and you, man. Right. Brothers going to be getting locked up tonight. They can't wait to make a mass amount of money off of y'all tonight, man. Right. But y'all call this event good. This is your oppressor's event. You have no business being at this damn event, man. Right. To hell with this event. Read. Woe unto them that call evil good. Destruction to those that call evil good. They say St. Patrick's Day is a time of luckiness. Don't nothing lucky come from wearing damn green and damn clovers on your damn neck, man. Oh, that's right. Don't nothing lucky come from this. Nothing but destruction comes from this. This is sin on the Most High God Sabbath day. Right. Sin and death come out of St. Patrick's Day, man. Right. 
Point blank and period. This is an odd thing in the eyesight of the Lord, man. Right. Read. And good, evil. And good, evil. We're bringing out the good. What is good? You know what I want. Give me the book of Romans, the seventh chapter. Yeah. Let's figure out what good is according to God. Because our people tend to call good, evil, and evil good. That's Read. Right. Romans chapter 7, verse 12. Come on. Wherefore the law is holy. Now, the laws of God that was only given to the Israelites for the Israelites. Go ahead. And the commandment, holy. The commandments and the laws of God are holy. They're set apart. They were never given to any other nation on the face of this planet but the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. You are the children of Israel. This law is set apart for you and you only. Read. And just and good. The laws of God are just and good. But nah, not with the black man today. No, St. Patrick's Day is good. Wait a minute. The Most High God's Day, the Sabbath falls today. That's good. You guys call that evil. Why? Because it hinders you from being able to do your, all your work. See, the treatment of God. We are not black men, we are the Israelites. Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.